So they say an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but no one's ever told you a tab a day keeps the lag at bay. When presenting video or audio on Google Meet, you want to present a tab instead of a window or the entire screen because this allows the media to play smoothly and without any lag. So the next time you're sharing your screen, pick present a tab and this has a benefit of hiding your browsing history from your nosy colleagues. Oh, oh, this, <laughs> this is clearly a joke made for this video. Why is it not closing? Uh, <laughs> let, let's just get started. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff. And in this video, we're going over seven pretty cool tips for Google Meet and stay till the end for some bonus tips for Google Chat. Google Meet tip number two, you can just type in meet.new directly into the browser to start a new video call. And once you're in, you can add others by typing in their email or copy and send this link to them so they can paste it in their browser. If you close this window by mistake, don't worry. You can actually just copy the text up here before the question mark and this link will work as well. Pro tip number two, and I found this out embarrassingly late, you don't actually need a Google account to join a Google Meet video conference. So if I paste in the meeting link in an incognito window, I just have to leave my name and wait for the host to let me in like this. Tip number three, you probably already know you can change your background by going to the three dots here, apply visual effects, blur, or choose one of the preset backgrounds. But if you wanted something custom and unique to you, something like this, Oh, uh, wrong one again. Oops, uh, not that one. Uh, uh, this one, uh, much better. Uh, first, pick an image you like. Then go to canva.com, a free tool. They're not sponsoring this video. Uh, create custom dimension of 1920 times 1080p. Upload your image. Crop, adjust, edit, make it your own then download and upload onto Google Meet. Once all that is set up, Google Meet productivity tip number four is if you're presenting Google Slides or Google Docs, instead of having to open up a new window or going back to your video call, you can actually just click the present button here and present without having to leave this window. Pro tip, if you're sharing Google Slides, you wanna present full screen, but still wanna see your audience, you can click the drop down menu here, press presenter view, close the speaker notes, and now your presentation is in full screen and you can still see everyone else. Tip number five, if you connect your iPhone to your Mac using a cable, you can actually use QuickTime Player to project your iPhone screen. And from Google Meet, you can present uh, the QuickTime Player window, and now you can do app or product demos much easier. I'm using an iPhone and a Mac, but this works with Android and PC as well. You just need a PC specific piece of software. If you're enjoying these tips so far, make sure to drop a like and feel free to sign up for my No BS Productivity Newsletter, where I send you one practical tip and one keyboard shortcut every other week. Link down below. Google Meet tip number six is especially relevant when the connection isn't great and you're having trouble hearing another speaker. And that is to turn on captions. It is surprisingly accurate in capturing what's being said and by who. And pro tip, you can actually click the settings icon here and pick one of five languages. It doesn't translate for you in real time. You actually have to be speaking these languages. Uh, I did German last time, so let's try uh, Spanish. <clears throat> no hablo español. Hey, Spanish speakers, let me know how I did. Tip number seven is to use the whiteboarding feature found under the activities tab. Basically, this brings up Google Jamboard, which is another product they integrated into Google Meet. The way I use it is I stay away from the pencil since drawing is so hard with a mouse and instead use a combination of shapes and text boxes to get my message across. This is usually for ad hoc discussions when no slides were prepared ahead of time, but I found myself using this more and more. If your business or school uses Google Workspace, previously known as G Suite, you'll see more options here like breakout rooms, polls, Q&A, and recording. So let me know if you want a video on that as well. Next tip is a small one. If you're the host, the meeting ends early, but the other attendees wanna stay and discuss more topics, or at least that's what they say, but in reality, they're bad-mouthing you. It didn't happen to me, I'm just saying. Uh, when you end the call, you wanna click just leave the call instead of end the call for everyone. Now, onto bonus tips for Google Chat. If you're someone who prefers a centralized dashboard or workspace, go to your Gmail settings, chat and meet, enable Google Chat, press OK, left side of the inbox and show the meet section in the main menu as well and click save changes. Now you can access 
email chat spaces, which is just group chat, and meet straight from your Gmail inbox. And this will enable you to go into a chat box and video call the person you're chatting with immediately or schedule a meeting with them uh, via Google Calendar, all in a centralized location. If you end up going this route, a useful shortcut to remember is H plus C plus enter, and this will bring up the chat window of the person you are most recently conversing with. To be very honest, I personally prefer the standalone Google Chat app, and one of the features I use all the time is setting a custom status. Some of you are gonna hate on me for this, but by default, my status is nohello.net, which is a very passive aggressive way of telling the person messaging me to skip the, hey, how are ya, how are you doing? And get straight to the point because that's just more efficient. Another feature I use on Google Chat is forwarding a message to my inbox. This is particularly helpful if someone sends you a link you need to reference later on, or to save some incriminating information you can use for office blackmail. By the way, if you're wondering why my Gmail inbox looks like this, check out my inbox zero step-by-step -step tutorial. I'll link that down below as well. Last few tips, I pin the conversation with my manager and my team to the top of the list uh, for easy access. I usually turn on uh, chat history because I never say anything uh, inappropriate at work. And if you type in semicolon in the chat box, this brings up the emoji picker. If you enjoyed these tips, you might want to check out my playlist on the other Google productivity products as well. See you on the next video. And in the meantime, have a great one.